Our first calculation is going to involve us to prepare 100 milliliters of a 0 0.0833 molar solution of copper 2 sulfate. Question asks, what quantity of copper 2 sulfate is required? So we need to do the calculations and we'll show that on the back. Now again, you're using a different substance. I'm just showing this as an example. So anytime that you know your volume and your molarity, always, always, always start with your volume. So in this case, we have 100 milliliters. And again, since molarity is in moles over liters, that's why we start with our volume, because we want to change the milliliters into liters. So one liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. And then if we were to cancel right there, we'd have liters. So now we get to multiply our molarity by this value. So 0 0.0833, and that is moles of copper 2 sulfate, CuSO4, and that's per liter. But the thing is, when it asks for what quantity, there's no way to measure moles. So you have to measure out how many grams. So we need to convert this one more step and say, okay, one mole of copper sulfate. And just like what we did in the first calculation, we found the molar mass. And in this case, it was 159.61 grams. And that gave us, or will give us a value of 1.32 grams. So weigh out the 1.32 grams of your substance. Once you have your 1.32 grams of your substance, then grab your 100 milliliter volumetric flask and let's add our contents. And I'm going to use a funnel to do that. So the funnel, and then pour the contents in, kind of tap it out, make sure all the crystals are out. So all the crystals are out. And then what's nice is there's nothing left in the funnel, so everything's inside your volumetric flask. Now what's neat about the volumetric flask, or what makes it unique, is there's one mark on this volumetric flask. And let me show, I'm going to add a little bit of water here so we can actually see that mark. Okay. And that volumetric, or that mark, is very, very, very specific. And it's actually, I'm trying to find it here, it's not very clear, or not very well marked. You can't really see it too well on here. I'm trying to zoom in. You can, can kind of see the ring. Let me zoom in even more. Ah, oh, there it is. So there's a mark right about here. And that isn't as clear as the other volumetric flask. Let me go grab the other volumetric flask. The so other volumetric down. flask, actually, its mark is a little well. Let me get that out of the way. Its mark is a little easier to see. You can see that ring that goes around right here. And that tells us exactly the volume that we need to go to. So when we're filling up our volumetric flask, okay, and I'm going to out here. So as we're filling this up with water, okay, first of all we're trying to dissolve it. And so as you add more water it becomes more soluble. And so you just keep adding, but don't add too much. Because once you get to the point where you're getting close to the ring, you've got to slow down. Okay, so I'm gonna shake it up a little more that dissolve and you'll notice that the solution starts to turn kind of a bluish color and we've got to make sure all those crystals dissolve before we can do anything and it might take a little bit of time for that to happen so you can still see crystals sitting in the bottom of that volumetric flask and when I'm satisfied then I'll top this off so there's still some crystals in there 
kind of carefully swirl it around. Don't stick a stirring rod in here or anything. Just give it some time here. It will dissolve. And we're getting really close. All right. And as I continue to swirl that. Okay. And there all the crystals have dissolved. Now I'm going to add just enough water. And the mark is like right here. I know you can't see it very well there. So I'm going to... Let me do this. Hopefully we can get it. I'm going to add water to the line. And the line is right where my finger is. So you want to add just enough water until your total volume, in this case, is 100 milliliters. And you don't want to go over. Boy, that's perfect. Okay, so right up to the line. And what we've just created is a 0 0.0833 more solution. We have 100 milliliters of it. Pretty cool. Okay, now what we're going to do is dilute this down. So let's take a look at the calculations for that. For our second calculation, we need to find out what volume of the 100 milliliters that we just prepared, we need to know what volume of the 0.833 molar solution would be required to prepare a 250 mil solution of a 0 0.00422 molar solution. Keep in mind, this is our dilute solution. How do you know it's dilute? Because it has a lower concentration. This is our more concentrated. So this is our more concentrated solution. Now there's an equation, I haven't shown this to you, and that's the whole reason why I made this video, is to help you complete the calculation here. And for those of you who are going into AP Chemistry, you'll be able to use this as well. So here's a neat little thing, because when we ask, or when the question's asking, or asked, what volume of this original solution is needed to make 250 milliliters of this, the really crazy thing is, if you take your volume times molarity, just like what we talked about earlier, if you take your volume times molarity, which is volume times molarity, moles over liters, the liters cancel out and we're left with moles. So that's what we're trying to find out. The number of moles in each of these will be the same. Okay. However, just keep in mind, the number of moles or the number of particles don't change for these two solutions. It's the amount of water that changes. So we want to find out, first of all, how many moles we actually have here. And that will be equal to the amount of moles that we have in our concentrated solution. So there's this neat equation. It's called, or it's actually set up like this, where the molarity of the initial solution times the volume of the initial solution is equal to the molarity of the final solution times the volume of the solution. So again, you have molarity times volume, which equals our initial number of moles, which will be equal to our final number of moles. So we're going to use this equation here. So let me go ahead and plug in those values. Let's rearrange these variables. So we have our final molarity and final volume. That's what this is. And we have our initial concentration, but we're actually looking for this. So in this case, we're going to divide by our initial molarity or our initial concentration. So our equation now looks like this. Let's scoot that down just a little. So our volume that we're looking for of the original solution is equal to, to the molarity at the end times the molarity or the volume at the end divided by the initial molarity. So when I plug those numbers in, and again don't get too worked up that we're looking at milliliters because the units are the same, so they'll cancel out. And we kind of want our answer to be in milliliters when we finish. So I've got my initial molarity, which is 0 0.0, I'm sorry, our final molarity, which is 4 point, sorry, 0 0.00422 molarity. And we're going to want 250 milliliters of that. Okay. And my initial concentration, is this guy here, the point zero eight three three? So what happens to the units here? So the units, molarity, get canceled out, and we're left with our volume. And when we multiply that all out, we get 12.7 milliliters. Okay? And keep in mind that if I take 12.7 
milliliters of my initial solution here, that will give me the same number of moles as my solution here. Okay, So this is a really neat calculation, and there are harder ways to do this. This is probably one of the best. So now that we know that we need 12.7 milliliters, probably the best thing that we have, and again, we don't have a pipette that can get us to 12.7 milliliters, so we'll use our graduated cylinder to help us measure this out. So we already have our original solution prepared, which is the 100 milliliters of our initial solution. And what I want to do is I want to take 12.7 milliliters of the initial concentration, which is more concentrated, and place it into our 250 milliliter volumetric flask. And then we're going to add just enough water so that the total volume equals 250 mils. So we're going to create now a new concentration. So I'm going to take my graduated cylinder and pour in 12.7 mils. And the nice thing is if you put too much in here, that's okay because we can definitely fix that. So in this case, put a little too much in there. So let's get our 12.7. By golly, we got it. So then we take our 12.7 milliliters of our solution and we'll pour it carefully into our new volumetric, larger volumetric flask. Okay. And it probably wouldn't be a bad idea, just for kicks and giggles, to rinse out our graduated cylinder since I'm sure you'll have some of those particles in there and again it's just distilled water so if we pour that in there it's actually a good thing good practice okay. all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to top this off to 250 mils hopefully I have enough water And the line that we're trying to go to, let's see if you can see it on here, is actually right there. See that line? That kind of looks like an oval at that point right there. So that's where we're trying to get our water line to. So I'm going to go eye level here. And carefully add by drop wise and we want to go to the bottom of the meniscus and by golly we got it okay so there so by taking a look at these two solutions hopefully you recognize wow that the concentrated solution is definitely a lot darker than our diluted solution and when you actually put this into your um, cubette and we'll take it to the colorimeter now, obviously, your solution is not going to be blue 